Hey everyone, this is Nick and today we're going to take a look at a bunch of amazing applications made for Elementor EOS. But don't worry, you can also install them on any other Linux distribution thanks to the magic of Flatpak. So we have small utilities and more powerful tools and most of these apps I actually use every day on my Elementor EOS laptop and my Fedora desktop. So for people who think that Linux has no good apps, stay a while and listen just like you should listen to this segue to today's sponsor, Linode. Linode is an amazing way to get your Linux server up and running. They've been voted top provider for infrastructure as a service by G2 and Trustradius, and they offer tons of one-click deployable servers. For example, Owncast, letting you run your own Twitch-like streaming server with video broadcast and chat capabilities, or Apache Guacamole, which is the easiest way to get your own fully featured Linux desktop in the cloud, accessible from anywhere in the world. If you prefer gaming, you can also start your own Valheim server on Linode, and they also have one-click servers available for CSGO, Rust, Arc, or Minecraft, among others. Now, on top of that, Linode is currently upgrading all their data centers with faster NVMe block storage, which means that every server that you currently have with them or that you plan to open with them will have access to that faster storage at no extra cost for you, which is pretty freaking amazing. Now, I personally run my own Nextcloud instance and only Office document server, both on Linode, and I couldn't be more satisfied. I can only recommend them. So if you want to give them a shot and get started, click the link in the description below and you will get a free $100 credit to start your own Linux server. So just to get started, all the applications I'm going to list here are available natively for Elementor iOS through the App Center, or if you're not running Elementor iOS, you can find them in the Elementary Flatpak remote. I left instructions in the description below to add that remote to any other distribution that uses Flatpak. Some of these apps might have versions in your distro's native repositories or in the AUR, for example. But yeah, the most important thing is that through Flatpak, you can get literally all of them without even looking. Just use the Flatpak remote linked in the description. So let's begin with the productivity tools. And the first one we're going to talk about is called Clips. So it's a simple clipboard manager that is visually appealing and lets you look at everything you copied in a graphical way. Images, links, text snippets, anything, even files, shows up in nice big cards. And you have tons of options to handle them. You can, of course, copy each element back, view it in its entirety, remove it from the clipboard, and view where the cache file is stored. So you could even decide to share these clipboard elements between computers if you use something like Nextcloud, for example. You can also search through all these snippets, and you have tons of options to make clips a permanent window, leave it above anything else, auto-clean the various things you've clipped, exclude specific apps from being included into the clipboard or from being able to receive pasted elements from it, and you can also choose the keyboard shortcuts to make it appear, protect clips with a master password so other people can't access them, or even shake the mouse cursor to reveal the window and auto-paste stuff in the active window if you've copied it from the clipboard. In short, it's an amazing clipboard manager that I use every day and looks really good. I only wish they took the opportunity to call it Clippy. I miss you, Clippy. The second app here is Planner. I've already covered it in a lot of detail, but it's still, in my opinion, the best to-do list and project management application you can use on Linux, period. It handles multiple projects that you can sync with a to-do list account, and it also has rudimentary support for CalDAV tasks. You can have as many projects as you like with multiple tasks and subtasks, reminders, due dates, priorities, a today view, it can sync with your calendar to also show appointments. It has a board view for your projects, multiple color schemes and look options to make it look at home on your desktop. And it has a quick add window you can summon with super plus N or any other keyboard shortcut you prefer to be able to add tasks to any project, even without the app being opened. So you virtually have no excuse to be a lazy bastard and forget the things that you were supposed to do. Hey dude, did you do the laundry? Now, Planner is wonderful, and I'm only waiting for it to better integrate with Nextcloud before I resume using it for the channel. In the meantime, it's my personal to-do list on Linux. Now, the next app, Outliner, will probably be of great help for anyone trying to do long-form writing, like writers or students. It lets you, well, outline your document by structuring it with big titles, subtitles, and notes. 
You can add notes to each main title as well as tags to find them back later and labels. It has multiple color schemes, it supports markdown, it lets you add checkboxes to all your main rows and you can export anything into HTML, OPML, org mode format, PDF, markdown or plain text so you can grab that outline and use it anywhere else you like. Interestingly, it also integrates well with Minder, the next app we're going to talk about. So Minder is a mind mapping tool that lets you create notes linked to each other so you can literally map out your idea for a project, for a book, for a student's report or a video, for example, if you're one of these amazing YouTube content creators. You don't even have a million subs, you loser. Fair enough. It lets you really tweak the layout, the look of the lines, the notes, the colors you want to use, and you can even add stickers to any node to make it look more diverse and categorize things. It's pretty powerful to organize your ideas and it lets you export into a huge number of formats, including FreeMind, XMind or FreePlane, so it's even interoperable with other mind mapping tools. Now, a much simpler app, but really useful when you just want to write something without worrying about formatting. It's a continuous text editor, so no pages, no styles, only text and markdown if you really, really want to have some formatting options. It also auto-saves while letting you create backups and you can use it to publish to Medium or write.as. You can also save your documents as text, markdown, HTML or even docx if you want to share them. Norca is a great distraction-free text editor that looks good and won't get in the way of your creative writing with toolbars and options and layouts and themes and how did this turn into a conversation about Emacs? Now, there's also TextShine. It's a very, very powerful text manipulation utility. It lets you grab or write anything and then transform it by setting it all to uppercase, lowercase, sentence case, title case, camel case, snake case, whatever case you want. It can also indent the text, insert line numbers or text from a file. It can convert from markdown to HTML. It can beautify your tables. It can change the quote signs. It can remove blank or duplicate lines, white space, line breaks. It can also fix the spaces, replace tabs with one space, search and replace anything and a lot more. It's basically an all-in-one studio to handle text that you might have grabbed from somewhere else and make it usable again. Now let's move on to image manipulation and there are a few small utilities here that can save you a lot of time. The first one is Frog. It's a very simple OCR tool. You just open it, select an area of your screen and it's going to grab all the text it can read or detect in the image. You can select between installed languages and copy that text, maybe to paste it into text shine that we just talked about to make it more usable. It can struggle with low-res images or handwritten text though, but it's still a handy tool to have if you have an old image-based PDF that you want to grab text off of without typing it manually because who has time for this kind of crap? Next is Resizer. It's a very simple tool that lets you resize images. You can just open it through your ass menu and drag any image in there to resize it to the desired dimensions. It will keep the aspect ratio, it won't upscale it so you don't lose image quality by accident, and it creates a copy of the image in the same directory with the new size you entered, which is nice. Combine it with Optimizer, which automatically optimizes your images to use less space. You can add multiple images at once and it will tell you how much space you saved. It generates images with a pretty good quality, I can't say I really noticed a big drop, and the savings can sometimes be huge. If you often use images to create blog posts, this is a pretty great tool to have under your belt. It does erase the original though, so be careful. I tend to use Resizer and Optimizer a lot when I create articles for my website, which is to say I don't use them very often anymore, but I, I plan to, I swear, I plan to, I promise. Next is Annotator, a simple image annotation tool that can still do a lot. If you don't want to fire up something like Inkscape or GIMP each time you want to mark down a few notes or ideas onto an image, a design proposal or a simple screenshot for a bug report, this is your tool. It can draw shapes, including arrows, add text, blur parts of the image, draw, magnify certain parts and even crop and resize the image. It's a very handy tool that I wish could auto open any screenshot you take, like what you can do on macOS. Now on to the audio tools, and the first one is Ensembles. It's still in alpha, but it definitely deserves a mention. 
It's an arranger workstation that lets you play music, arrange a performance or just improvise with a few pre-recorded styles to give you a beat and a tempo. It has DSP effects, more than 200 built-in instruments, you can sample sounds to automate your band and you can connect to an external MIDI keyboard. It's a wonderfully promising tool for audio production on Linux and I can't wait to see what artists can do with it. I, for one, will keep making basic beats for fun because I have no idea what I'm doing. Next is Tuner, and it will be a nice addition to the apps library of anyone who likes to discover new music. It lets you browse a huge catalog of web radios and play them. They are sorted by genre and you can favorite anyone you like to get back to it later. The app also lets you toggle autoplay to resume your latest played radio each time you open the app and it's also going to give you search and popular and trending radios for you to find. It also displays the name of the band and the song, so you can procure them to play locally by any legal means that you want. The next application kind of solves a missing feature of elementary OS, which is that it doesn't really let you control your audio outputs all that much. With Mixer, you can see each app that plays audio change its volume and balance, and change its output, so you can have music playing on Bluetooth speakers and an audio call or YouTube video playing on your headphones plugged into the same computer, for example. Really handy to make sure your audio is piped to the right peripheral. Now let's complete this video with a few utilities that you might need as well. The first one is Eddy, and it's a graphical DEB package installer. By default, Elementary OS doesn't let you install DEB packages graphically, and this solves that need. It's simple, straightforward, and heavily recommended on Elementary OS. Other distros might not have a use for it though. Now, the default Elementary OS calculator is okay, but if you need something more powerful, Pebbles is your new best friend. Just like my calculator was my best friend in high school. I used to program games on that Casio bad boy, and no, I didn't get beat up all the time at all. Now Pebbles is developed by the same developer who made Ensembles and it packs a scientific mode, a programmer mode, a dedicated mode for calculus, statistics, as well as unit converters and date calculations. It virtually does anything you would want to do in terms of numbers, it's just fantastic. Ordner, or whatever else you're supposed to pronounce that, is a simple Pomodoro timer that you can use to apply that working method. It basically helps you break down your work and pause rhythm between 25 minutes work sessions followed by 5 minutes of pause. Ordner will let you set how long your work duration and your pause durations are and it will send you notifications to pause whether you need to. Simple but efficient. And let's finish this tour with a simple app to get wallpapers from Unsplash. It's called Fondo and it lets you browse, search and filter images that you can get as your wallpaper in just one click. It's really cool if, like me, you just want to change things up often, but don't really know what you'd like to use as a wallpaper. You just browse a category and choose whatever you find pretty, and you're done. So that's it for this video. All of these apps are relatively simple and serve just one purpose in pure Unix fashion. They're available for Elementor iOS in the App Center for various asking prices that you can always change back to zero because it's a pay what you want model. And if you're on another distribution, you can just add the Elementor iOS Flatpak remote and install them as you'd like. Now, if you have other great simple app recommendations, don't hesitate to tell me about them in the comments and I will check them out, maybe make a project of the month video about them. So thank you guys for watching the video. It was made possible, as always, by Slimbook. They are based in Valencia, Spain, and they make Linux laptops, Linux desktops. They have products for all price points, all budgets. They ship worldwide. They have all keyboard layouts. I only use their stuff nowadays, their laptop, their desktop, and I'm super happy with them. So if you need a new computer running Linux out of the box, check the link in the description below. So thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like and subscribe and turn on notifications and whatever else YouTube requires. And if you didn't like the video, you can always dislike it and hope that the dislike count still shows up in your country. You can also tell me why in the comments. It's always better. And yeah, if you don't like YouTube, you can also find all my stuff on Odyssey. And if you want to help me keep doing these videos as my full-time job, you can join my Patreon subscribers and my YouTube members and get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!